Hello, I'm Professor Peraza, and today's lecture video covers alcohol. These are the specific learning objectives for this module. This module also meets the following course learning objective. According to the CDC, ethyl alcohol, or ethanol, is an intoxicating ingredient found in beer, wine, and liquor. Alcohol is produced by the fermentation of yeast, sugars, and starches. Recommendations regarding alcohol consumption are in standard size drinks. The 2020-2025 Dietary Guidelines for Americans recommends limiting alcohol to two drinks or less per day for men and one drink or less per day for women. It is not recommended that non-drinkers start drinking. Drinking less is also better for health than drinking more. A standard drink would be 14 grams or 1.2 tablespoons of pure alcohol. Examples of one standard drink include 12 ounces of beer at 5% alcohol content, 5 ounces of wine at 12% alcohol content, or 1.5 ounces of 80 proof liquor. There are two main pathways in which alcohol is metabolized. Both pathways are located in the liver, which is the primary site for alcohol metabolism. At low to moderate intakes, alcohol dehydrogenase and aldehyde dehydrogenase enzymes metabolize alcohol to acetaldehyde. This is a toxic substance and known to be carcinogenic. Acetaldehyde is then metabolized to acetate, which is less active byproduct. Acetate is then broken down into water and carbon dioxide for elimination. This pathway metabolizes the majority of alcohol consumption at low to moderate levels. With moderate to heavy drinking, the microsomal ethanol oxidating, oxidizing system, or MEOS, metabolizes most of the excess alcohol consumed. This MEOS is also used to metabolize drugs and toxins. Because alcohol metabolism takes first priority, use of MEOS for alcohol metabolism may increase risk for drug interactions and toxicities. There are many risks with consuming alcohol in excessive amounts. Excessive drinking, which includes binge and heavy drinking, is associated with many health problems. With binge drinking, this would be four or more drinks on a single occasion for women, and five or more for men. Heavy drinking would be eight or more drinks per week for women and 15 or more drinks for men. Health problems with excessive drinking include violence, fetal alcohol spectrum disorders, cancer of the, of the breast, liver, colon, rectum, mouth, pharynx, larynx, and esophagus, chronic diseases such as high blood pressure, stroke and heart disease, depression, anxiety, and liver disease. There are individuals who should not drink any alcohol, including those under the age of 21, those who are pregnant or may be pregnant, those taking medications that interact with alcohol, certain medical conditions, and those who may not be able to control their intake. While many still promote alcohol consumption for heart health, research shows that alcohol consumption at any intake can increase the risk of cardiovascular disease. Also, due to the nature of epidemiological studies and lack of randomized controlled trials, Healthcare professionals should not recommend alcohol as a primary or secondary intervention for cardiovascular disease. Consumption of a large amount of alcohol can lead to several changes in the liver that ultimately end in liver failure. The first stage is alcoholic fatty liver disease, where fats start to build up in the liver. This stage is reversible if the individual abstains from alcohol. Alcoholic hepatitis is caused by alcohol abuse over a longer period of time. At this stage, the liver cells are inflamed. There may or may not be symptoms, and if there are, it can include vomiting, jaundice, fever, and pain. This stage is also reversible if the individual abstains from alcohol permanently. The final stage is cirrhosis, where the liver becomes significantly scarred and the liver cells lose their function. This stage is generally not reversible and liver failure can develop. Abstinence from alcohol is crucial to stop any further damage. Before we talk about nutrients of concern with alcohol abuse, let's cover alcohol use disorder or AUD. The NIH defines this as a medical condition characterized by an impaired ability to stop or control alcohol use despite adverse social, occupational, or health consequences. The severity of AUD can range from mild to severe. There are many risk factors for AUD and they include drinking at an early age, genetics, and mental health conditions like depression, PTSD, PTSD, and ADHD. There are many nutrients of concern with alcohol use disorder. 
Alcohol can lead to not only more nutrients being lost in the urine, but poor absorption and storage of micronutrients. Alcohol inhibits fat absorption and impairs absorption of the fat-soluble vitamins A, E, D, and K. Vitamin A deficiency can be associated with night blindness, and vitamin D deficiency is associated with softening of the bones. Magnesium deficiency can be due to decreased intake and increased urinary excretion and can result in insulin resistance and muscle cramps. Selenium deficiency can lead to cardiomyopathy. Vitamin B1 or thiamine deficiency can lead to Wernicke-Karsakoff syndrome and neurological symptoms and damage. Vitamin B2 or riboflavin deficiency can lead to glossitis and colitis. Vitamin C deficiency can lead to scurvy with petechia. Myosin deficiency can lead to confusion and skin photosensitivity. Mineral deficiencies in particular can be secondary to alcohol-related problems like decreased calcium absorption due to fat malabsorption or iron deficiency relating to GI bleeding. Let's talk about alcohol in pregnancy. There is no known safe amount of alcohol use during pregnancy or while trying to get pregnant. Fetal alcohol spectrum disorders are 100% preventable with alcohol abstinence as alcohol consumption passes through to the baby via the umbilical cord. Consuming alcohol during pregnancy can lead to miscarriage, physical and mental issues. Babies with fetal alcohol syndrome, which is the most severe, can have smaller head size, poor coordination, poor memory, speech language delays, low IQ, vision or hearing problems, and abnormal facial features. As with pregnancy, avoiding alcohol while lactating is the safest option. As long as alcohol is in the mother's bloodstream, alcohol will be present in breast milk. Alcohol levels are the highest in breast milk about 30 to 60 minutes after consumption and can be detected for about two to three hours after just one drink. The length of time continues to increase with continued consumption of alcohol. If a mother consumes alcohol while breastfeeding, it is recommended to wait at least two hours before nursing or expressing milk. It is important to note that alcohol consumption can also reduce milk supply and lead to shortened breastfeeding duration. Alcohol consumption during breastfeeding can also lead the infant to have disrupted sleep.